I woke up very briefly on the 28th of December. I remember I woke up and I was choking on a feeding tube. So this this nurse took the, the mask off. She pulled the tube out of my throat. I remember feeling exhausted and I could I could hear voices around me. And I think because of the drugs I was on, everything was echoing, but I recognized like my wife's voice. And I remember trying to open my eyes and it felt like I had fish hooks in my eyes with weights on it. And I, I was focusing every ounce of strength I had to my eyelids to open them and I couldn't do it. I was that physically drained. Mm. And I was trying to talk and, and I could hardly talk and I was mumbling and they took the mask off me and, and made sure that I had a bit of space and wasn't freaking out too much. And I hired Becky beside me. I actually proposed to her right then and there. And then I was away for about 15 seconds, passed back out again. And the next day, they, I think they reduced my medication to bring me out of the drug-induced coma where I was a little bit more compass menace and understood a bit more about what was going on. Yeah, okay. So yeah. what was your what was your kind of initial thought? Because I guess if it was really surreal and you blacked out during periods, it must have been a point where you woke up and you thought all coming out of a dream, right? Mm. Or not? Those drugs they give you are pretty cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like you, coming you out wake of a trip, up then <laughs> and you just don't care about anything. Yeah, okay. I, I don't oh, really? know, know exactly what it was they give me. I'm pretty sure at various points I was on ketamine. Yeah, I was about to and, say I've been on ketamine before, and all I could feel was my head. I you broke just, my arm yeah. and they give me ketamine and I was and laid down. I was with Kirsty and I was going, Kirst, I can only feel my fucking face. I was about to say, man, I don't think I'm going to be talking about that sort of stuff at parties nah. on this podcast. <laughs> I was in <laughs> jesters and yeah. I was on ketamine. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no nah. you just... From a doctor, mate. <laughs> you, you, I just remember not caring about much and being really happy. And what they did was, I only spent seven days in intensive care that, that I was conscious for. And each day they gradually, I think, reduced my medication so that I became more aware of my situation and um, not accepting, but understanding of it. So initially I, I remember thinking I just lost a couple of toes and some fingers on my right hand. And then like the day after I was like, okay, I've lost my feet and these fingers. Then it was, no, 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 you've lost your legs above the knee you know, on day four and day five. And on day seven, I remember, uh, and because of these drugs, I've been hallucinating a lot. Mm, Do you remember, right. like, you remember the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember he had that kind of high fade brick square Lego block haircut. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like three Will Smiths came to visit me. One had the small cut. One was like me. Remember the kid and play from House Party, and mm -hmm. one had this massive. <laughs> yeah. And these three Will Smiths kept visiting me and talking to me in in this Fresh Prince of Bel Air <laughs> days. And there was an eight foot bottle of ketchup in the room. And people would visit me and they would have metal waste paper baskets yeah. on their head and all these crazy things. So, And then you think this is the drugs, not the lads just winding you up yeah, the whole yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sneaking in big bottles of fucking ketchup. You just, you fuck just yeah. become a little bit used to not understanding everything. And, you know, okay, I'm hallucinating. I know that now. And on the seventh day, I pulled my right arm out from under the bed sheet and tried to scratch my nose, which I had been doing successfully for the previous six days. And as I pulled my arm out, I looked at it and I kind of giggled a bit. And the nurse was like, what are you laughing at, Mark? I said, I'm hallucinating again. Looks like my arm's falling off. And she just looked at me like, and I was like, okay, I think I get it now. We're on day seven. It's both legs above the knee, right arm above the elbow. And it, it's so bizarre. Like, I don't know if they designed it that way or if it was just luck, but it, it kind of panned out perfectly that I was able to understand and accept that at that point the full extent of my injuries. It wasn't like a cold turkey, wake up, this is it. Mm. And uh, after that seventh day, they, they took me out and moved me upstairs to a single man room and continued to reduce the medication and, and bring me back more into the real world so we could figure out a plan with what we were going to do moving forward. What was the pain like at that point? Like obviously once they reduced the drugs and stuff, obviously you'd have had big wounds and whatever else. What was the pain like? Yeah, but, I mean, they give you this little button, right? And they say... <laughs> that you press that and it gives you morphine, but I don't know if it's like a placebo thing, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't comfortable. Yeah. And you know, cause you're on so medica much medication, you, you're like constipated all the time. And I had a big hole in my left hand. I could only use two fingers so I could hardly move anywhere. I couldn't sit up for probably the first two weeks because although I was fit and strong, it's a different kind of strength than your core and your glutes and you had to try and even just sit up. 
And because you didn't have the legs as an anchor point, you know, it was like one of them weebles that you just, you set up and flop back down again. So trying to deal with it all. And I had these, it was like a sponge in my left thigh with a tube coming out of it. I was just constantly sucking uh, dirt and sand and stuff because it was such an open wound to stop the infections. So I was just wired up to so much stuff. Did you get any infections or anything from any of it? No, I had I had three operations in that first six weeks and they were called, they called them debridling, which is, they explained it to me as basically getting a wire brush and just scrubbing all the dirt and sand out of your wounds. And then you spend a day or a couple of days recovering from that. But I only had three operations uh, after I was injured. I've got friends who are on That's crazy, 60 yeah. plus mm. that whose injuries on the surface don't look as severe as mine, mm. but internal injuries and all that, which I was fortunate enough not to suffer with, they're, they're constantly having operations. So, you know, a week in intensive care, three operations, six weeks in total in hospital, and I was done, mm. ready for rehab.